Well, thank you. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for indulging us. That was, that was the film. So uh, now I guess open it up to any questions you guys might have. Um, we'd love to answer them. I don't have any questions. This is Teresa Vega. I am so excited uh, to uh, have watched that film. Uh, tomorrow, I will be in Greenwich for the Witness Stone ceremony. Yes. Um, Catherine is my cousin and my ancestors have been in Greenwich, Connecticut since the 1600s. So I yes. wanna say to the students and the teachers, you are our heroes. Um, you are doing basically historic detective work, and we really appreciate what you're doing. And um, by by basically bringing these enslaved and formerly enslaved people um, back into the historic record, because our stories are out there, they require deep digging. And um, I, I just think it, it's fantastic what you're doing. And I just wanted to share that. Uh, with you all. Thank you very much. It means a lot. It means a lot. So you could just unmute yourself. I could uh, serve as a moderator. Um, and Caleb, I think as a director, you could direct maybe the questions. So, so just unmute yourself and ask away. Any questions? Go ahead, Rich. Just, uh, yeah. Wonderful job and such an important story to be told. I was just interested. You indicated that the Caesar family was a, a free family, uh, not in, not enslaved in Salisbury. And you, I'm just curious. Do you do you know anything about the uh, their economics? You know what uh, what work uh, they did. You you have obviously a military record at the time of the revolution. But are there any other other documents <laughs> about the the families? Um, kind of work life is that for me well either for you miss silverton or for caleb or any okay. whoever's researched this so oh, yeah i was i was going to direct it to miss overton um because we she's by far done the most uh digging into this uh into this history Thank so you. i'm going to direct it to her okay um i'll take a stab at it we, of course as you know um it's not as complete but um, I, uh, what I understand, they were in they were up on Chen Mountain, and uh, they had quite a bit of land, 135 or so acres. And at that time, Salisbury, Salisbury was um, involved heavily in the uh, iron ore yeah. um, business. And I've come across some records, actually one record that I, I believe they were suing <laughs> some company huh. over. It, the company had a name that was associated with you know, the ore business. Now, I believe they must have been contributing some mm. type of uh, effort to that to that mm. um, industry. Um, being up there with all those trees, I was explaining this to my grandson, you know, you make uh, charcoal out of charcoal. those trees. Yeah. And then that, fill, you know, fills the kiln. And not, not only that, but on census records, it, it shows, them as, uh, I think my grand, uh, grandfather, uh, George's son, uh, was uh, a, listed as a peddler and somebody that was selling fish or he, I think they did whatever it took, you know, to maintain themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's something that we found when we went up to the campsite and we found to at least two places. So first of all, we found charcoal in the ground. Um, yeah. that, that seemed to be aged. We found two places that would have been charcoal huts, which is where you create charcoal in these massive wooden structures. Uh, you burn it over time. Uh, and also I, I want to say that the, Lack of there's one record which they're put as as, as tradespeople with no significant or no 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 specific rather uh, actual work um, uh, and I think that sort of has to do with the point of what we're going to get at is that a lot of these records of them sort of see them as sort of like less important and that their jobs Africa. weren't 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 things to be remembered that they didn't matter as much no. because of that. No. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I think uh, we, we have a we have a farm boy student, uh, Jim. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, uh, when I went up to the site, the Caesar House site, first they had a they had a really large barn for the time. Like they had a small pen area, and then they had a large inside area with a lot of uh, rock fences surrounding the barn. So I think they probably they definitely had a couple cows up there too. Big farming. 
Yeah, actually, now that you mention that, Jim, uh, I, I do have records um, after they passed, after they passed as well as Ward, but George was the one up on uh, Sharon Mountain. Uh, Ward had moved down into Sharon Valley. Uh, um, um, yeah, so it, when, when his probate was administered, and you know, they have an in inventory list, uh, he had, he had quite a few um, cows and animals, <laughs> and uh, he actually had his his uh, animal name. So I believe I remember seeing one of the cows named Molly or something. I thought that was kind of funny, but he definitely had he definitely had a farm up there. And he had enough an animals to list them on the inventory. I remember one of my uh, classmates had found an ear tag for an animal earlier in the year. Mm. Oh, okay. Catherine? I have a question. Any one of the boys, first I want to say thank uh -oh. you again for an amazing. Oh, did someone have a question? I'm sorry. Uh, this yes, is I think Shirley, Shirley or. Is that this is Gail. Gail, you go first too? and then Candace could go. Go ahead, Gail. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Gail. Oh, hi. Listen, um, Catherine Overton, I have to thank you so much. I've been hearing about your work for so long. I am um, no, Ruth. Ruth, <laughs> I am Ruth Caesar, who is Ruth Hogan's. I'm her daughter, one of her youngest, yes. her youngest daughter. Oh, and I know okay. you've been talking to my cousin, Hazel's <laughs> son, um, uh, yeah, Artie, Artie McKelvin, and I just thank you for doing so much incredible work, which yeah. was a lot of which was not mentioned about the um, revolution, right. uh, about uh, my grandfather Arthur Caesar, who was the chauffeur for the right. uh, um, the Springarn family, the Springarn. philanthropist yeah. over in the Sharon Connecticut yeah. area and Amenia area, and amazing. Oh, yeah amazing oh, work yeah. that you've done and you're highlighting for for the world uh salisbury uh i have a question how do we get a hold of this uh film that you've produced so so, so i can first, spread it to their nieces nephews grandchildren yeah, sure, sure, absolutely else. so so in, in typical teenage boy work we were uploading this to the website like literally minutes before this thing started i uh, was doing some major stress eating as we were getting ready um, but but stay tuned. We're going to um, we're going to research your your uh, uh, great uncle Arthur. So we'll be in touch. Um, there's a project we're thinking about doing about him, and we will have this up on our YouTube webpage. Um, and, and so, uh, what's the name of the page, guys? I think it's searching for slavery in Salisbury on YouTube. And, and, and uh, Caroline, I'm not sure that's what it is. Yeah. Caroline will share the link um, um, to everyone who came. So, so feel free to share it, but we have to upload it to that first. Okay, thank you so much for great work. Okay. Candace, go ahead. And Gail, did you, um, I'm sorry, Gail, did, yes. didn't your cousin, did your, who, who got married at your Ruth, didn't Ruth get married? I'm sorry. Catherine, this is Ruth your daughter. Caesar. Yes. Mom. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Mother, kind of going in. Hi. Go ahead, Mother. It's, yeah. no, it's oh, yeah. I think your, your connection is really bad. So you're going in and out. So I don't know if it's because where you're sitting. Yeah. If you can move so that we can um, get a better signal, that would be great. We want to hear what you have to say. Okay. I would really prefer to get on my computer because the lights are not on this phone. So Catherine, we, can't, we can't hear you. So why don't you hop off your Catherine, hop off your phone and get on your computer because we can't. Yeah. Right, right before yeah. this started, thunderstorms from Maryland okay. from Maryland and knocked her power out. So that's okay. why she's on her phone. But go ahead, Candace. You you had a question? Yes. I, I so I was wanted to say uh first of all, thank you once again. You guys did an amazing job. All you guys working together, collaborating with my mother, my nephews. I mean, it just was amazing. And to my newly found cousin, hello. I can't wait to um, to see what we can do with learning about was your father, correct? 
if your grandfather who was the the chauffeur for the spin guards my grandfather yeah your grandfather Arthur yeah I, Arthur and Mary Arthur she, yeah I grew up hearing well. stories from my grandmother Ray okay, who okay yes. yes yes okay yeah, so th th that was wonderful but to the boys I wanted to ask well. if any of you guys sorry well. my, my grandchildren if any of you guys I'm gonna see if I can ask this no mute out do you guys have anything that you can share that was something that you didn't know about um, African American indigenous people prior to doing this? One thing that really jumped out at you prior to doing oh, the documentary. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna, like I didn't, like I said, I had no idea uh, that this, this history, that this family even existed in my, in my town. Um, so that was kind of like the first shock on the first day and then like finding out, you know, that they, uh, George Caesar owned property here. That was everything I learned about, about the Caesar family. Everything I was learning throughout the process was totally new information, uh, information for me. And then, uh, not necessarily related to, uh, the, the Caesar family, but at the beginning of the year, we read um, Complicity or Complicit. I think it's Complicity, um, yeah. which blew my mind um, because, you know, I always thought that uh, the the North were, were always the good guys in the situation and, and the South were always the bad guys. And then do you, you come to realize through reading that book that it was like the North was profiting hardcore off of, off of the... the the, the trade going on and um, uh, you learn about some of the coastal cities uh, trading um, with the West Indies and, and just profiting completely off of, uh, off of slavery. And that was like a huge learning that the cotton gin was not what I was taught in, in middle school, not like this amazing invention, but rather something that actually added millions, um, it, it caused the enslavement of millions of, um, of, of people. So it was just a completely eye-opening experience. Hey, Caleb, will you introduce Isaac and Kasai and talk about, and they could maybe talk about their part of the process? Yeah, so um, Isaac and Kasai are uh, the grand, grandkids of, of Miss Overton, and they, uh, it was a very complicated process because of, of COVID to get, get this done. Um, and they helped streamline it because we had to, send them a camera down to Texas and a mic. I believe they bought the lighting. And then we, me and Ms. McCriskey were on Zoom. They did the interview. Then they, they, they sent the, the, the film up and they also did interviews with some of our other team members. So they were a, a huge, huge part um, of this project. Uh, couldn't thank them enough uh, and- well, Let's put them on the spot. Yeah. Why, don't yeah. you, why, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Isaac Moore, and the uh, grandson of Kathy Overton, and yeah. I'm Kasai Moore, the other grandson. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say, Caleb, that was um, I'm glad that you felt that we were very important a little, but you were communicating. If you weren't there, then it would have been really like hectic between us, especially in Josh that helped us through, obviously the interviews and Mr. McCriskey helping us with the lighting. It was an experience. And uh, I realized the first time we went on with you guys in the beginning of the project when we were all on Zoom together and getting ready to start the project that it was going to be, you know, a uh, wild ride for both of us in getting the camera was also one of the things um, that helped us look at light and scenery. We learned different things, especially your history. Um, and I really appreciate y'all, you know, being patient with us, of course, that we were learning through. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, for me, I think it was just, I love the experience. This is like the first time I've ever done anything like this. So personally, just me, um, going through this experience with my grandmother and with all you guys, um, it really opened my mind up to like what I could learn about my own family and like other families. And it really interested me more than I thought it would actually. So this was a great experience for me too. Well, thank you guys again. You were you were you were awesome throughout.
Um, uh, quickly, Caleb, sorry to interrupt you. Can I just address that last question about uh, like what we found out? Uh, like, I, I've always had an education that was like super focused on like slavery in the South, and like we really went into. I didn't really know. It's first of complicity, that book. Um, highly recommended, first of all. But about like that slavery was in the North, and then like we went to the structure of that and like how it existed and how it was been, was been through, so put away and how the slavery in the North sort of bolstered, you know, the the academic class that you that is so powerful now, and that like that that these these strains of wealth that we see still thriving today came for off the backs of slave workers in the North, and that was something that really shocked me and didn't change my perspective of of everything that we're doing. Any other questions? So this is Katrina, <clears throat> uh, daughter of Catherine Overton and a, a cousin to several cousins on here. <laughs> so um, you guys, you always blow me away. I've just been on the back, of course, in the back <laughs> of the scene, just watching this whole process unfold. And it's a lot of hours, you guys. It's a lot of work. And the biggest word that these boys have shown, in addition to my mom, has been dedication and a spirit of excellence. And I am completely floored by what you guys have not just put together, but then just the capacity in which you've taken the information and owned it and really absorbed it so that you can see the world completely. And that, to me, once you get that kind of information, it doesn't ever go away. It changes you forever. And I feel like you guys did something that was not just a life-changing experience for yourself, but it's a life-changing experience for my family and for other people who have no idea um, about this information. And all it did for me, I've heard these stories from my grandmother, Ray, too. I was um, cousin uh, Susan, the Hogan family. I know them from New York. I was up there with my Nana Ray, all of them, know her, the Spin Garden family, all that stuff. It's something to hear stories like that as a child. It's another thing for you guys to bring images and locations and documents to life. Like, you know, but until then it feels like a myth or like a story, even though I know it was true, but you guys made it, made it real. And so I'm saying thank you. And thank you for including my uh, sons in the project. I think it was necessary for them to, to be a part of it um, for themselves. Uh, so they also have a different perspective. I think as we learn more about our history, it not only lets people of color feel have a different perspective about our own selves, in addition to letting people that are, are not people of color, how they feel as well um, about um, our country. And so just thank you. I'm very proud of you. And I see a lot of tentacles of where this can go because there's so much more information um, that's out there. So I can't wait to see what you guys, you boys do um, next. I'm just gonna respond really quickly to that. Um, we, I, at least I kind of felt the same. Obviously I had never heard these stories um, before, but like Mr. McChrissy telling us like, oh, we're going up to, to the, the Caesar Brook campsite, which formerly was, was property belonging to George Caesar. It didn't, we weren't quite sure what to expect. Um, and we got up there and we brought the metal detector and it didn't quite feel real. And then all of a sudden there was a picture of it some of it's a little deceiving because there was a, um, uh, I'm losing the word, a, a tent, uh, something, you, the, the thing you used to anchor the tent, there was one of those, but we, we brought the metal detector and we like found stuff that um, probably could be dated back to, to George Caesar. And then everything started feeling, feeling more real. Like this was someone's, someone's livelihood. This is where someone lived. This is the road they took down to the town. So we went through some of the same kind of, as Ms. Overton put it, aha moments during the project that were uh, like absolutely incredible. And just in case any law enforcement is on, we left everything we found up there, uh, just for the record. We didn't did not take anything. Any other questions or anything? Hey guys, it's Mrs. Barilero here and my husband, and we are just so enthralled with the work you've done. I mean, I've been hearing all about it at school and in your announcements, and um, I didn't get to make it to James Mars Day in Norfolk, sadly, but I am just so blown away at, at the dedication you have brought to this, and um, 
I'm really excited to keep following the work that, that you do and um, big huge thanks to the Overtons and, and your extended family for all being on this call. This is amazing. So um, thanks for sharing it with the rest of us. Way to go. Yeah, I also think that's a big part of this is that although like, I may be graduating this year, a lot of us are graduating this year, this class isn't over. And like these stories, like, we're not done and no one is done. Like we've, this is just the beginning of a lot of things. Also, I saw Mr. Sullivan that you uh, had a question a, a while ago. I was wondering if you would like to ask that. Oh, thank, um, let's see. I'm still muted. Oh, not used to Zoom. Uh, no, Salisbury guys, uh, very impressive. In fact, uh, Steven Spielberg called early on. He wants his uh, cinematographer back. Uh, but um, no, um, I'm amazed. Uh, it was really cool what you guys did. And it's great to hear Catherine and her family's reaction. It's so cool to connect the current generations back to the actual history that you guys have uncovered and pulled out of the shadows. So it's impressive. I have a question about the land. Like when you went up there, like you all, um, for most of us who haven't actually been on site, did you have any insights? Did you think about the position of the house? I mean, it was, it was neat to hear um, your classmate who knows about farm life and the size of the farm, but overall was it like, you know, Venture Smith purposely put his homestead at the end of a colonial road so that he would be protected. He would see people, Bald Hill was right by it. He could see people coming and the water protected him on the front side. Did you, was it, uh, was the Caesar property situated like that for defensive purposes or was it, you know, protected from the winds out of the West? What did you notice? What did the land teach you about the homestead up there? I think if anyone else other than Jim answered this. Mm. <laughs> Well, the wind kind of came up the mountain, so that was kind of weird to start off. So he would have to put his trash like behind the house, up, up near the barn. That's why the barn was above the house, so he couldn't smell the cows. And also, um, his road ran right down, right towards uh, the river. So he was kind of in a defensive position, but I wouldn't say that's why he put it there. I think he put it there because like, maybe in the center of his land, also next to the stream, there was a, a really yeah, right cool stream that ran. Like you could jump into the stream from the house. Yeah. That's cool. So you had, you know, access to water, to the, you know, to the, the road itself. Um, so it seemed like it was a very favorable place to be. He was a little bit away, but then not too far from community life there. Yeah, something that really like blew my mind was when we were hiking up there, um, imagining walking up and down that hill with like a, a wheelbarrow of charcoal. And that was just like, like these guys, not only did they work, but they worked hard and they worked every day uh, and, and they, they provided a vital resource for these industries. Yeah. The other thing to keep in mind is, is this is between Cornwall and Sharon and then Poughkeepsie, right? So, so that spot on the road, you go a little bit over that mountain and then you're in Sharon, which was a big thoroughfare um, to the Hudson. So, so you know, who's a tonic in the Hudson? I have a question. Um, different groups of students study different individuals. Um, did you get a sense of what the African-American community whether these individuals might have known each other or, or what the community was like being up here um, enslaved, free, how they interacted, how they supported each other, anything like that? Did any of that come to light? Um, well, thank you, mom, for the question. Uh, that's my mom. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, that, that's tough to say. We, we did note some stuff that might point to, like, we, we can see that they, the Caesar family was interacted with, they were, they were part of the community. Um, the, the fact that if you go to the Hotchkiss school, um, Miss Overton found um, the, the graves of, of some of the, the Caesar family members in the actual um, cemetery that's at the Hotchkiss school. 
So we, part of our, it was very early on, but we were like, oh, what's the connection? Did they, did they know each other? Did the Hotchkiss uh, or the Bissell family um, know, know the Caesars in any, any way? Um, and it, it was pretty hard to find information about that. Um, I can't really speak to their relationship with uh, people like... Uh, so I, I can't tell... Um, the answer was that yes, they, they knew each other, um, and, and it was a, it was a smallish time, and it was a smallish world, particularly for Black folk. Um, for for example, another uh, James Mars wrote one narrative of an enslaved person. Another one was was William Grimes from Litchfield, not very far um, from from Salisbury. And William Grimes married a woman named um, Clarissa, and Clarissa was the sister of Timothy Caesar. So I'm sorry, Titus Caesar. So Timothy was a Revolutionary War. You saw his pay stub in the video. His daughter Clarissa married William Grimes. I mean, it was a small world. Um, I would not be surprised at all. I don't think anyone would be if if uh, if, T if Titus Caesar knew uh, James Mars. You know, it, it, I think it's very very likely. Yeah, we also, as for more specifically the Caesar family, um, it wasn't just that there were one group that lived up there. Throughout the census records, you can see that uh, the family grows and Nancy Caesar actually owned her own property uh, near the original Caesar uh, um, Caesar campsite. And so we kind of see that there was this one house that we found, but it was part of a larger established community in those hills. Uh, with that, although we don't know by name anyone else who was there, it was obvious that there were other people uh, living there with them. The expert is back on. Uh, I'm not sure her, if her Mike is working any better. I know this is killing her. Uh, Catherine, why don't you try it? Sorry, I'm so sorry about all this. That's much, Chris. That's much better. Is it? I was yeah. all set to go, and all the the storm came through. I'm just sorry. I don't use my phone for stuff like this. So, Catherine, the question... I heard the I heard the question about whether they would would have known the seas abyssals. Um, I I would I I would I am going to step out and say. Obviously, they would have known the Bissells because they the, the Bissells, uh, that was their land before they donated it to the school. And so the Caesars were living there and they would, I mean, small communities like that, everybody knew everybody. Um, I just think it, you know, it would have been, I mean, I don't think there was any distance, you know, or disassociation, let's put it that way. I think they had a regular neighborly relationship. And they did work for them because I, I read in, in other people's, uh, you know, actually I read in uh, one of Ed's, uh, Ed Kirby's books, uh, Stories of Sharon, volume two or something. You know, he was talking about the fact that his father worked on uh, the Winthrop family's farm, that he was the caretaker. Um, so there were people who were interconnected through commerce, you know, and I just don't see how you could ignore or not no people that were right near your on your land or near your land. I, I can't imagine that they were not enslaved. They were well respected citizens, and their their property was worth you know it was valued. Uh, it 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 went up in into over time. Um, so I mean they were pretty comfortable. I wouldn't say they were wealthy, of course not, but they I think they were pretty comfortable. In, in that, it, it, I, we didn't talk about the broadside, or I wasn't on when you did, but let me let me introduce the broadside because that's such a cool story. And we talked 1870. about 1870 at the Scoville. And, and I think many of us are familiar with Frederick Douglass's um, Fourth of July speech where he said, what, What's the Fourth of July to, to Black man, to Black people? And uh, Catherine has a great story about a party George threw uh, and a broadside she found. Why don't you tell that, Catherine? Okay. Well, I actually didn't find it. Uh, I, I, it was given to me by my uh, late cousin. Uh, we called her doll. Her name is Elizabeth uh, Hartford uh, Sanderlin. And this is the person I told you, this is how Jean and I first kind of came together because Jean was the one who mentioned the name of someone who worked for the Bissells. Again, there was a lot of association with the Bissell family. And this person turned out to be Lizzie Hartford, uh, whom my cousin Elizabeth Hartford was named after, Elizabeth Hartford Sanderlin was named after, and she would be Olive Caesar's daughter, and her uh, Olive Caesar's granddaughter Susan is on with me tonight, so she can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong about that, <laughs> but 
but she's the one that gave me the, the copy of the broadside. The broadside was announcing, it was actually an invitation to the community to join the Caesar family on, on Sharon Mountain in celebration of the 4th of July and especially for the, the passage of the 15th Amendment. The biggest letters in there are passage of the 15th Amendment and 1870, which means that was, a, that was the uh, year that uh, Black people were finally uh, given the right to vote. So they're paying their taxes, they're owning land, they're trying being industrious. They are, you know, landowning men because women couldn't own land, couldn't vote either. But um, they they were participating fully in the community, but they didn't have the right to vote. So when that passed, there was a huge celebrations all over the country. Uh, there were parades in New York, everywhere. They invited the community to come up to their home and celebrate the passage uh, of the Fifteenth Amendment. Now. Someone who didn't have any means wouldn't be able to do that. And uh, the only, only caveat, caveat they had that I find very interesting is that he says, uh, white persons of respectability will be treated well. In other words, don't come up there and stun anything. <laughs> That's the way I took it. Because, you know, he was an industrious man and um, he, uh, he, couldn't have, he couldn't have been able to do something like that if he didn't have the wherewithal to do it. So that's my take on it. Anybody else got any comments? Susan, you out there? <laughs> I agree with you, Kathy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, thanks to Cousin Doll for giving me that information because I, I had not seen that. And, um, and I sure didn't know the story behind it until I did more digging. Mm -hmm. So one of, one of my, uh, I don't know, dreams is to have a huge 4th of July party up in Salisbury and have all the Caesars <laughs> back for it. Uh, we got, we gotta make be that. Fun. <laughs> Rich, maybe the Salisbury Association. Uh, you got you to plan, we'll plan for that. <laughs> Let's talk Listen about it. Yeah. And everybody good. else is on, I know they're on. <laughs> yes. And all my extended family in uh, Salisbury, including cousin Jean, was not my newly uh, uh, appointed cousin, Jean McMillan, because without her, we wouldn't even be talking to each other right now. She's the one that gave the, made the initial connection to my family. Okay, sorry. So that's Jean McMillan, the, the uh, Salisbury Town historian. And, and we tried to get her on Zoom, Catherine. We tried for about a half an hour today. We just, she has Windows 7, which I think is from 1930. We weren't able oh, yeah, that's to get okay. Zoom to work She can on. see it, she can see it. Yeah, we're gonna send her a record. Yeah, she'll see it. Yeah. Um, I might ask a question. Um, this is to the, actually to the audience. And this is a little unorthodox. Uh, my question is, after watching the documentary, um, if, if anybody's be willing to share, just what type of emotions or thoughts do you have about hearing this information for maybe the first time? I'm a teacher. Don't make me start calling you out. Leona, I see you. Okay, it's Caleb's mother. I feel compelled to help. <laughs> I felt embarrassed that I'm solidly in middle age and that uh, I had never been exposed to a more um, richer view of history that included everyone who was involved. So uh, it's hearing Caleb come home, um, a lot of nights really jazzed about this class and what he was discovering and his own feelings at the age of 18 of where was, how did I get this far without knowing this? And um, it spurred me my own curiosity to read uh, and explore different books and, and try to educate myself. So it's been, there's been a knock on effect in, in our family anyway. So I'm grateful uh, for that. I'm going to jump in as another family member, but just make the comment that we've all had a lot of Zoom calls during the pandemic, 
but this feels like a family Zoom call, notwithstanding that I have family members, but I feel more a part of the Overton family. Uh, it's, it's really neat. John, would you, you know, will you share, I, I, you know, Joan's a historian uh, and she, she's a historian at Hotchkiss School. Um, and, you know, I, I'd love to get your, your take on this. Well, first of all, congratulations to all of you. Uh, I've made a little film about Salisbury and it was far less complicated than what you all did and um, hats off to all of you. Um, but second of all, having done almost a decade long local history project at Hotchkiss and embarrassingly been asked by students of color, well, what, what can you tell us? And I just didn't have enough information. And so what you all have done is sort of uncork the bottle and um, you're the trailblazers and it's, it's wonderful. It's just tears to the eyes. It's just great. And so uh, I, you know, we will be putting it uh, on, with your permission, on one of our um, sites for our library so our students can use it because we, we get questions all the time. Students want to see themselves in American history. And that's what you've done. So hats off. It's great. And I, I wanted to say something to everybody. Um, I wanted, I, 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 during this pandemic, a, a lot of us have had a lot of time to maybe look at videos or Google things. And I've started learning a lot about history that I didn't know either. And I think we, you know, we have feelings where we say, you know, I know I'm Caleb, was it Caleb, your mom? Is that your mom, Caleb, who said, you know, she felt embarrassed and Miss um, Baldwin? Is that your, I say, you know, felt lost for words. But I want, I, what I've learned is unfortunately, a lot of the, uh, a lot of us don't know a lot, not just you, but a lot of us don't know. And it's by design, unfortunately. And I think that what they have done is pull the cork off. And hopefully we will, it'll just um, cause us to think wait, there might be more than what we've been told. And maybe it'll spark our own inner desire to search for truth. My thing that I've been telling people right through here is, it, I think it's a time for us to relearn what we've been told. Because a lot of things that we've been told might not have been the truth or the full truth. So I, I think it's a wonderful adventure that we all can go on so that we can re-educate our families going forward. Yeah, I, I'd just like to, to, to say something about that. Um, I mean, I was, I was also embarrassed. Uh, I think there's a lot to be desired from the American education system when it comes to confronting, confronting history. Um, so like growing up, you know, we had, we learned about Co Co Columbus Day uh, and, you know, we, we probably dedicated a, a very small portion to um, Black and Indigenous uh, history. And a lot of it was, you know, not the full story, not giving us a full story. And then it was through either experience or academic freedom. Uh, I did, it. my eighth grade project was on the Dakota Access Pipeline. And that's when I discovered like the, the Treaty of Fort Laramie and, and how many broken treaties have been uh, have happened with the Native American populations and then coming to this class and finding all, all of that stuff. And um, I got a chance to talk with Johanna Hayes, our, our um, representative at James Mars Day. And it was, I kind of like said to her and she, she agreed that like, when you give us or, or anyone kind of this academic freedom, we're always gonna gravitate, gravitate towards change. So this was um, kind of a, a just kind of re-educating ourselves, re-educating as many people as we can with this film was extremely important to us um, because th there's a lot of, <laughs> of information that's, that's not, not been discovered or has, has yet to been uncovered because it's out there. It's just, 
uh, like we saw with with all the information that Ms. Overton got, it's out there. It just took took some digging. I would like everybody's autograph. I'd like to say this publicly, so that I can say that I knew you win because you guys have an amazing future. I I, I can just see it. I can see it, and I know others on this can, Zoom can see it as well. Well, Candace, the star of the show is your mother. You know that. Yes, I I just wanted to chime. I mean, she definitely is. I'm, I, I'm not a number. I'm Sharon Esdale and from New Haven. And um, Catherine has just been an extraordinary uh, person to um, get to know, to love, uh, and to interact with in all she does. And, and so the question about how were, I think Katrina said, how are we feeling after seeing this film? And I feel as if I've been a part of this project. I don't sort of put dates and numbers all to, even though it's on my face there. I don't put that kind of, as I order things in my universe, I order by the sort of passion and the feeling and, and, and the sort of summative knowledge. And I feel as if I've been a part uh, peering into this project for some time um, since Catherine came to New Haven for Timothy Caesar's commemoration at Grove Street Cemetery. And you had been to Salisbury. And at that time, I think, which was two or three years ago, I believe you mentioned that this project was sort of in its infancy. And so we've been able to look in on your work. And the first thing I have to say as a, a seasoned educator is how fortunate you young folks are, you students are to have a teacher who gave you the wings to um, uplift and soar and fly. The end of this story is not over. It, it's going to continue. And what an extraordinary gift um, that you must be, Mr. Mariski. You may not know it. You might be a pain in the, you know what, at times. I don't know. I don't know how you guide. But to get to this point is, is just extraordinary. And to all of the students and the parents who sort of, you know, joined on to this. It could have gone other ways and it hasn't. So the story is not over and the work continues and, and you're making possibilities for many, many of us to continue to be hopeful and so on. So, I mean, all of that, Katrina, was the emotional kind of quality. It was standing at Grove Street and Timothy Caesar being recognized and just being overwhelmed and you know not even having the the words to be able to say and to be able to come back and capture that it's this is one of those those times and it's it's extraordinary and so my question has to do with students will be graduating what will be the the course um, within the history department and the courses, if you could shed a little bit of that on us. And then I think uh, one of the students said about staying in touch with each other. It might've been Jim or Nick, I can't remember. So thank you, that, that was a long way to say that. You know, it's um, a bunch of people have, have shared um, similar thoughts and, and has, you know, have said nice things about me. And it's really not, you know, coming at, there's no false modesty here. Like I've just gotten out of the way. Like that's what I've done. Um, you're look, you're like, <sighs> Bobby, how do you do it? <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm hopeful, you know. That's what this year has taught me is um, these guys are gonna change it.
Well, I can tell you, Ronan, uh, I think it was maybe a, maybe a few months earlier than right now, last year, when you were proposing this and, um, you know, I mean, anyone that listens to your passion and to your heart and, and to, to your spirit knows that this was going to be something amazing. Um, but honestly, as, as great as uh, I think we all knew this, you know, that this was going to be, it, it's, it's really, I think, transformed so many lives. Um, and, and certainly for our students um, learning a, you know, in a complete entirely new way, uh, how to learn, right? And how to study and how to, you know, embrace and, and be part. I mean, you're forever part of history. You know, you're forever part of history now. And, uh, you know, I, I think, I think it was Katrina said, you know, this, this is now forever part of you, you know, and, and I thought that was brilliant. And, you know, Catherine, you're, you're, I think this is maybe the third time I've had a chance to hear you speak. And, and it's just been, it's been a blessing every time. And, uh, you know, so Ronan, your, your courage uh, to, to lead the way has been phenomenal. And, uh, and your courage to, to kind of give the boys the, the, the free, free reign is amazing too. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for letting me yes. compose myself, Bobby. Uh, you're, you're the man. Um, listen, uh, guys, don't tell anyone I cried, Parker. You especially. <laughs> uh, right. I, like, I've blown, been blown away by these guys. Th this year has transformed these kids. Uh, the world is going to be very different because of them. Um, and, not, and not just these guys in front of us. Like, this generation, um, they've been scarred in a way that, that, you know, our generation, you know, really didn't feel communally. Everyone felt this. And they're not looking to us to solve stuff anymore. You know, they're looking for us to get out of the way and they're going to fix it. Um, so as shitty as this year has been, um, I'm, 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 I've never been more hopeful for this country. And all those history wars that are going on right now, the nonsense you see on the headlines every day coming out of Washington, D.C., coming out of Texas, coming out of all those states, like this is the front lines of history. And these guys are blazing the path. And, and, and you're not... You're not putting this cork pack in the bottle. This history's told now. This this is this is done. This is a done deal, and it's going to keep going. Um, hi, Ronan. Uh, my name is Chantel, and um, I I am just amazed at the work that Miss Overton has done. Um, this has really enlightened me, but it has also empowered me because I also want to do a historian. Uh, a, a lesson like this to track my family. So um, I've talked to Katrina a little bit about talking to you, Miss Overton, about how to get started because I'm sure there are some nuggets in my family as well. And I would like to learn my family history and um, where I came from as well. And I just wanna say to the young men, um, including, including Isaac and Kasai, um, that I'm just extremely proud of you. You guys are young and um, just empowered with the thing that you have put together. I mean, you guys have taken the reins and ran with this and did a phenomenal job. And as someone else said, I can't wait to see what your future hold, what the future holds for you. So thank you for putting this together. Thank you for being dedicated and committed to the end product. Um, if I may say something, this is uh, Sean Williams. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, first of all, thank you, Aunt Kathy, for everything you've done, um, for even getting this ball rolling. And, you know, Isaac and Kasai, for y'all to even pick it up and, and help her out with that just by listening. You know, a lot of times kids have trouble listening. And you really listen. And not only did you listen, you were moved to do something. And that movement inside of you um, was felt by your teacher. And, you know, I'm an educator here in North Carolina, and I know how it is when you, you have a curriculum to go by and um, you're trying to do other things to make your students step outside of that box. But sometimes administration fight against that. So hats off to you for 
just be, you know, be stepping up and being able to go out and do that. Um, and thank everyone, you know, all the students for stepping in and having the heart to do it. And, and all the parents also, because those, those spark conversations at home and you guys were part of that conversation. So, you know, many lives has been touched by this. It's gonna change, you know, but I would like to also say, well, with our family, I know, especially with Aunt Kathy, there's many stories there, you know, um, with Aunt Kathy being the first African-American lady stepping into an integrated high school in Elizabeth City, that's something else that I want her to continue working on because challenges was there, just as with the Caesar family, it seemed like they continue to overcome the challenges you know, just dig in and work hard and keep going, do what you gotta do for your family. So as in Kasai, I'm, I'm happy, I'm grateful for you and um, y'all continue on, keep your heads up and keep going strong. Okay, anyone else? Caroline said she didn't wanna end this. I just wanted to say one thing. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, my yes. Name is, <laughs> my name is Christian. Uh, Christian Moore. Isaac and Kasai are actually my brothers. Um, watching this, um, as uh, my aunt Candace had um, previously spoken on, is very important for youth their age as well as people my age um just figuring out the learning about yourself at an earlier age than most people do um especially um in the black community we don't know we don't sometimes get the opportunity to be able to learn about ourselves at an early age um to help us develop into better men and better uh better family structures um later down the line um compared to others and compared to um other communities so just for them to be a part of this um as a brother they know i'm always talking to them about different things and stuff like that so just for them to be a part of this um on their own and to experience this and things like that is i'm proud of them and it's good for them it's good to see so that's all you guys did a good job We got to put that B reel footage, the, the blooper reel, Isaac, of you and Kasai and your grandma. Uh, I was just about to, <laughs> just about to say that. If that's, what, if that's what you wanted to put at the end, that was good. But I just want to say, uh, Mr. Crispy, that I'm really thankful for you and the boys, uh, for the guys that came with us. You really were like a backbone. I could always see when I met you the first time that you had this passion that you really wanted to get it done. And of course, my grandmother. and the years even before this whole thing started, I see she was trying to do, it was like she was running a marathon, but she was trying to do different puzzles and put together, it's like she's trying to run a marathon and try to do puzzles at the same time. And I saw as the years went by, she got more threads. She was picking from more and more threads and more people got involved pushing her from behind. And it was just an amazing um, time, thing to see. And you could just like see the time. And now that we're like here, it's like we you know, got to the finish line. It's kind of, well, not, it doesn't have to be the finish line, but it's more of like a checkpoint where you, we just can breathe. And I don't know. It, I'm just really, I don't have words to appreciate um, how much you all helped me. And uh, I think, or if you would like, I would like to collaborate with you all in the future if you do any more other stuff. So I appreciate it. One of my favorite stories was... Uh... We had, we're all boys school up in, in Salisbury, Connecticut and, you know, teenage boys and this guy are not the most organized. And we kept changing the dates for the filming. And finally Katrina's like, you don't understand. My mother has to have her hair done. Do you realize what a job that is? I have to take the day off. You, you kids can't change the day on us. And she set us straight. And that was like a perfect lesson for us to hear at the perfect time. And, uh, and the hair was worth it. You look great. The whole, the whole, the whole setup was great. The, the, the Zoom Room Raider was a 10 on that. Can I step back in real quick? Okay. Because I'm going to zoom out. 
because I had them all written out. I got to say, okay. First of all, to the gentleman scholars of Salisbury. Catherine, uh, can Catherine, you hear me? Catherine, you got to go back to where you just were. Okay, got it. Okay. It was perfect. Okay, start here. Here now. It's still okay. like. To the gentleman scholars of Salisbury School. Mm -mm. You must say it for me. Call you on the phone. Please stay tuned. One more, please. Ronan, while she's fixing her audio, I just wanted to say my name is Danelle. Uh, I am the narrator's mom. I would like to really commend you all on the professional presentation of this documentary. I was not expecting such depth and it was really beautiful. To answer Katrina's question, um, I didn't know much about what I was gonna be watching. Jake did not share a lot of it with me, um, but I felt so emotional. I was so sad that people and their lives were erased and, and not knowing that this was happening, not knowing anything about this. Um, so I'm so thankful to you all for the education that you provided for me. Um, and it's left me wanting to know more and left me wanting to ask questions. And, and I wanted to see the next episode. So the Salisbury Netflix documentary episodes um, hopefully will, will show up sometime soon. But I, see, I feel so proud to be part of this community. So thank you. Thank you to everyone, the educators and the boys. Really appreciate it. Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Hi, my name is Ben Hawley. I'm a, a Civil War reenactor. And I got connected to your group through uh, Catherine Overton. It seems that Catherine and I are related, we're through DNA, we are related. So I'm very happy about that. And I'm very proud to be a member, um, uh, well, of her family and, and she of mine. I, when Catherine sent me the, the URL for this meeting and I forgot, I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> so I have to apologize for what I missed. Please keep me on your mailing list. <clears throat> Please keep me on your mailing list. <laughs> Excuse me for anything that you do in the future. It, it sounded like a wonderful program. Thank you very much. So we do have um, a class Instagram and a class Twitter account that the boys run. Uh, it, the Twitter is is uh, at slavery north capital S capital N. Um, what's the Instagram? I'm not. I'm an idiot when it comes to that. I believe it's finding slavery. Finding slavery. And I know Catherine, who is just the best, most patient teacher there is, um, she, she'll want to know that the Caesar family was, was never enslaved. They were, they were um, free, a free family because Catherine, you found, uh, I, I'm hoping your audio works. I want you to tell us. If not, I'm going to throw it to Katrina. Um, tell us how you found your, 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 your prime maternal link and why yep. the Caesar family was free. And why the Caesar family was free. Can you just, Rachel Caesar was Native American and she was free. That was the progenitor of the, of the family, of the family line. And that was Timothy Caesar's mother. And so, in terms of uh, Native Americans, uh, uh, they were not um, considered property. And so it, the bloodline flows through the mother. And so there's a 1705 law that my mother wants you all to know <laughs> that the children assume the status of the mother. And so that's how that line or that lineage um, continued to remain free. If that's not an example of the, the broad tapestry that is America, I don't know what is. You know, we're here talking about this free um, black family that actually is a free black and indigenous family that is a part of this town called Salisbury. 
Um, you know, this is what America is. So let's just keep telling this story. So I have a question with if, you know, I didn't even process that till just now. So if Rachel, is you say Rachel? Yes, it's Rachel. Rachel, Rachel um, that is that the pe Pico? Pequot. Pequot. I always, I always get that mixed up. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so it's the so, Pequot. So that means if the line falls a mother, then we are actually aboriginals, not black, right? We're aboriginals. Well, we be both one's not binary but we can talk about that i, okay. I think that's i just I, was wondering i know i think that's a great discovery i think that's another thing um linked to follow when we talk about the the legs on this thing um we could have followed tentacles. rachel right oh, so many tentacles so we could have followed rachel and figure out what we can offer is my understanding right mother uh so uh and so we know she didn't have a lot of need uh, though that she was almost like a ward, I guess, of the of the state. Listed on the Massachusetts re register as a Indian pauper. That's how we know that she was Native American and not Negro, uh, ne uh, Negro or, mm -hmm. so we don't know. So we uh, other places, of course, as you guys know, people do records even now, census by how you see them, as my mom's saying. And so she could have, in other places, you see her listed as, black in other places it's Indian. And so a lot of times also they go by what they see and they just write it down. That's why some people, even people of color have been listed as Caucasian because our color, uh, um, because it come, we come in so many different shades. And so I think that's another thing. I think we, we're so caught up on, this is me now talking, not my mother. We're so caught up now on this color thing about these shades and all this stuff. And it's so, not that the culture of itself is not important, but it's so superficial because we all are so interconnected. Um, the other part that you all may not know from the Caesar side in our DNA is that we also have Irish. So we're Irish, African, Native American. My husband's from the Caribbean. He's Portuguese. His mother's from India, West it, it's, it's We're so connected that honestly, that that's why when I think about history, when people say our history, your history, at the end of the day, we, it's all of our history. We're all going to be connected at some point in time. The question is how far back? That's it. That's how I feel about it. All right, mommy, that's all you wanted to say, right? Oh, she has something she wants me to say. Okay, she's ready to say what she has to say. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, mommy. Go ahead. Thank you to the Salisbury scholars, the gentlemen of Salisbury and their visionary teacher, Mr. Ronan McCriskey, uh, who put their time and the resources into making this happen. And she would say your hearts and souls as well. Another shout out <laughs> to Mrs. Jean McMillan, <laughs> the historian of Salisbury and to making the connection between herself and uh, Ronan as well. She said, wait a minute, she, I have some more. Just one second, please, I have some more. All my genealogy bu buddies that are on, thank you for attending, especially my friend, Karen, who, who, who drove with me to Sharon Salisbury the first time. My Dixwell Avenue, um, church friends, especially Sharon. Hi, Sharon. That's how she said it. <laughs> oh, and and she said thank you just for supporting her from all the way back to, from doing the Timothy Caesar burial. You, a lot of people have been along long along the way. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> My my great my my family in Texas, my daughter, that's me, y'all, uh, and my my son-in-law and my grandsons for putting up with me for six months as we worked on this project <laughs> and using the and using the living room as a movie movie production <laughs> studio. <laughs> and my grandsons, I love you guys. Couldn't have done it without your technical support. And everybody knows that is the truth. <laughs> and the last person and not least, 
Oh, thanks, Mom. That's for Ray Williams. Uh, Katrina, what's your husband's name? Uh, Mahesh Moore. He, in a lot of ways, he's the unsung hero because he had his mother-in-law living with him for six months. And Katrina called me at one point. She's like, I need to know when this project's going to be oh, done. Well, I did you know? not. <laughs> yes, I did not. Did. Yes, what did you say? I did not. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Um, the other one, the other hero here tonight, and he has not gotten nearly enough credit, is Caleb Meck. Um, Caleb's mom called me a number of times saying, if he flunks his courses, if he gets threes on his APs, you're in trouble, um, McCriskey. Um, this was his vision. And uh, Caleb, I'm really proud of you. You crushed this and, 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 and well done. Um, and I know you work with Mr. Willis, who, who had to hop off. He, he's, he's also amazing. If you ever are looking for a mentor, a documentary filmmaker, and, um, you know, the school who gave us the space, like the administrators, the fact that we had a school year this year is, you know, blows me away. And I'm grateful every single day because they, they gave us the space and the time and we had school and we were able to use it to do something like this. So um, thank you to the administrators who kept their eyes on COVID and distance learning and masking and all the stuff that thank God I didn't have to. Um, so, so thank you, Bobby and the other administrators as well. Um, listen, we could talk all night. Um, I'm sure Caroline Birchfield might be willing to have another party like this in the near future. Absolutely. Um, I've never had more fun, Ronan. Honestly, I'm just blown away by what I've been exposed to tonight. Um, thank you. I, I spoke in my introduction about finding truth and hope, and I hear those two words mentioned again and again and again. And What's happened tonight is that we're all going to out and we're going to talk about it tomorrow and then more people will understand what we need to do and that we can do it. So I just thank you. I thank you, Remarkable Boys, this extraordinary family for your inspiration um, and the gift that you've given us tonight. And I'll be quiet. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, Caroline, we'll figure out what we'll, we'll get this uploaded onto our YouTube channel and then you'll you'll send it out. Is that the I will. As soon okay, as we cool. have the link up, I will send it to everybody who is on this call and those who had to leave early. Everyone who registered will get it. Yes. All right. Well, listen, thank, thank you, you very much, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, don't tell anyone I cried um, and uh, and and we'll keep the work going. I promise there, there's a lot of stories to be told and these guys will do it. I promise you. Ronan, it's, it's recorded that you cried, so don't worry. We'll, we'll edit that. We'll edit it. <laughs> good tears. Good tears. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you, everybody. Good night. Thanks, good night. Mom. Bye bye. Thank you, thank everybody. You, everybody. For One last thing before I go, because I usually stay at the last second. But uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, I didn't know what y'all were doing with the editing process. And I knew you guys were going to do good because Caleb was just saying, oh, we're going to be done. We're just, just hold on. Just, just hold on a minute. And Mr. Kriski was assuring us. And I was like, uh, yeah, I know it's going to be good regardless because y'all work hard. Um, but I just want to, I really can't, like I said before, I really can't, you know, abbreviate like my words more than enough to you if i could do anything to show my appreciation y'all guys i would appreciate it but you know i, I don't know thank you guys so much you did it too isaac you were really you important were you know, i was just i was just putting i was just putting up with stuff you know no, you weren't y'all took I me through it your grandmother would say i need this on gmail i put it on my google drive and you walked away. <laughs> i know what you did I, you don't want to see the behind the scenes you don't want to see it i know i don't <laughs> um thanks guys proud of you really really proud of you and mm. Carol, thanks for the space my friend and we'll talk soon what a privilege thank, thank you, you mr Rikursky. all right see you guys and Miss Birchfield as well thank you so much what a gift take good care of you guys thank you all right, bye, yeah, bye. Have a good night. oh he left damn it <laughs>